Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, every now and then I go through my storage unit and I dig a bit of technology out that I've been meaning to do a project on. And uh, today is one of these days, and of course I love a good computer rebuild. So I've dug out the FIC AN11, it's a socket A motherboard featuring the chipset KT266A released in 2001. A pretty common and popular uh, option at the time for socket A from what I've read. The motherboard itself uh, seemed to feature pretty well. Um, it wasn't the highest rated motherboard but it had a good feature set, good compatibility and good stability which I guess were important at the time. Also optional IDE RAID was quite nice to have as well. Mine does not have that. It's quite interesting actually looking back through some of these reviews and the pairings that you know everyone was using. Uh, you know, 256 megabytes of RAM, but Windows 2000. It's quite a small period before Windows XP, I guess, was mainstream and Windows 98 was still dominant as well. Um, but the benchmarks result in, you know, pretty decent performance, you know, they, they are up there. Um, pretty neat. Um, but yeah, there's the uh, socket A there. It's got 133 uh, megahertz front side bus this uh, motherboard supports. Uh, featuring quite a wide range of CPUs. The AMD CPUs can still be found on eBay for a pretty reasonable cost. It's actually um, nice to see. Um, some of the more fast ones, of course, do you know demand a bit of a higher premium. Um, but hey, if you're willing to go down 100 megahertz um, or a model, I picked uh, this one up because I have zero uh, self-control. Um, for uh, quite a good deal as always for a future video but this is now um, so we've got quite a few uh, PCI slots on the board AGP as well got the usual USB one of my ports is slightly busted there uh, sound game port parallel all the rest of it also featuring pretty typical bulging capacitor uh, this is quite common on some of these boards. Um, I don't have enough capacitors on hand to recap the motherboard fully. Um, so what I'm going to do is just replace the one bulging capacitor. I figured um, it probably still works but it might cause uh, some stability issues. This also gives me a chance to use a brand new tool, which I have no idea why I'd buy sooner, a uh, desoldering gun, sucking gun. <coughs> Literally the capacitor just fell out when I did that. Uh, I really, really wished I had bought one of these uh, sooner. But anyway, it makes uh, recapping a motherboard really easy. Thankfully, I do have a few capacitors still on hand, so just solder a new one in its place. Yeah, I should have bought one of those tools much sooner. But the CPU we've got is actually a 1.6 GHz CPU. And you'll see here, I didn't realize that it was clocked at 1.3 in the motherboard. Uh, so I only found that out just recently, so I have to go back and check. But anyway, um, the motherboard, I've actually got two of these. One of them doesn't work, and this one does, albeit with a slight bend in the board. Um, but... It uh, came as a sort of a batch of mystery motherboards that I found on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, no idea if they worked. Um, they're cheap. They're like $20 each. So I bought two of them. One of them, if I can get the other one going, it's for a future project. Um, sort of more of a restoration of another machine. Um, but yeah, for starters, I'm going with the 256 megabytes of um, DDR RAM. This is a DDR-capable motherboard, very fancy for the time. 
but uh, later on I used an extra 256 megabytes to bump it up to 512. The case I've got today is absolutely massive. It is a very, very tall tower that I won online for a dollar. Of course, the shipping was like $50 NZ because of how much it weighed. It was full of parts, Pentium 4 stuff mainly, but it was disgusting. It was gross. It'd been in a smoker's house. It was filled with fluff. I don't want to know, mold, I mean just look at that fan and that photo, but yeah, gross. But anyway, cleaned it all up, I didn't film that part because it was outside with a hose and a brush scrubbing everything down, um, but I'm just going to try and mount the motherboard to the back panel. Um, easier said than done because it uses some custom standoffs which I don't actually have any spare or any available so I had to get a little bit creative. Um, some of them have very odd thread pitch so you'll see here I'm using a thumb screw uh, just to hold the motherboard down on this corner. It worked fine, it held the board down and it wasn't going anywhere and I had to put some plastic standoffs in behind here so the board wouldn't bend and flex. As you can see this motherboard already has a pretty substantial uh, bow to it um, but once installed it was pretty easy just to slide the whole uh, motherboard um, shelf into the back of the case. Very nice. After that painless installation of the motherboard, it's just a matter of putting some screws into the back of it just to hold the shelf in so it doesn't slide around. Pretty easy. Um, it's really just six screws, quite a few actually, um, to hold this whole tray in. Uh, everyone's favorite part is putting the headers in. And um, yeah, as you can imagine, they didn't work first time. Um, <laughs> they never worked first time for me, so. Uh, anyway, just a bit of trial and error and getting them all in place and uh, no dramas. Power is handled by the Intermax PSU at 250 watts, pretty average amount. Uh, I don't think this is a super um, thirsty machine for power so I think this will do just fine. I had a bit of a look inside of it, there's no bulging capacitors, it came out of a, another machine. I uh, must have uh, scrapped or decommissioned at one stage um, but it's got the fancy gold fan shroud at the back there which is uh, very period correct for something like this <laughs> it's uh, got to have the gold fan shroud you know you got to complete the look and uh, yes I am missing my motherboard IO shield I had a look on eBay but I can't seem to find one that is correct um, I went through quite a few of them a year ago when I've, you know, that's how long I've had this motherboard sitting around for. Um, but I couldn't find any. So, hmm, if anyone's got any ideas or how to get one. I don't own a 3D printer, so I can't uh, make one, but yeah, anyway, carry on. And I don't know why this is a very common thing, but the power connector, the ATX power connector is sort of in the middle of the motherboard which makes for routing the cables really, really annoying and yeah, looks like crap because it's just sitting there in the middle of the motherboard. Yeah, anyway, just kind of shovel the spaghetti around and zip tie it up, you know, classic um, skill sets that I've got. Storage is handled by a very noisy 40 gigabyte hard drive that I picked up on my uh, last trip to Christchurch. There's a store there that I go into and they often have a pack of hard drives kicking around. Uh, this time they only had three. I ended up sort of just buying all of them because why not? I'm only there once a year, if that. Um, I didn't realize but it, yeah, the bearings in it are a little bit louder than I would have liked, especially when fitting such a quiet Noctua uh, CPU fan. Um, but yeah, because this is a sort of very early 2000s machine, I really wanted a DVD-ROM drive. So I dug through my storage and found the last DVD-ROM drive I had in my stockpile. Uh, so I'll need to track some more of these down. Very nice to have 
IDE uh, DVD-ROM opens up a few extra games, um, you know, handy to have. Um, the case itself has some special sliders that you see there, you just sort of screw the rails to the side of the drive and just slide it in. Power's connected, managed to get a bit of Velcro around the cables there, and the three and a quarter inch, or half inch, sorry, floppy disk drive. Um, running out of these two, um, half the ones I tested didn't work or um, had seized rails, so I really need to watch some uh, YouTube tutorials on fixing these drives up. I uh, had trouble getting to the screws on the back, but then realized that the whole tray for the hard drive and floppy disk drive uh, can come out, so that means you can get to all the screws on either side. There's the big nose in there trying to get the cage back in that's held in with like four screws, oddly enough. And of course, we've got a fancy Gigabyte IDE cable to match the Gigabyte branded case. I think this is just a plain off the shelf case. Uh, some friends of mine had the same case but a smaller one. We'll just stuff that in there, no one has to know except, you know, everyone watching this video. And uh, yeah, the faceplate goes back on. It's a very recognizable case for me, actually. It's sort of got a, a, a knob for the power button that turns to lock the power switch out. Quite a fancy feature. Very plasticky and cheap feeling, but, and of course it's yellowed and browned from all the smoking and sunlight and yeah, ugh. Well, sound is handled by this very generic looking Sound Blaster Live sort of clone thing. Uh, I ended up switching this out for an actual Sound Blaster Live card while trying to diagnose some issues with the game. Uh, but anyway, it works for now, so I'll pop that in. As well as a very generic Ethernet card. It's just a T100 plain old Ethernet card. Uh, you'll see the video card up there is a GeForce Ti4200. It came in the bundle with the motherboards that I ordered. So these, this board that you're seeing here and the other one as well as a few extra other bits and pieces I got. Uh, sadly it doesn't work very well. Um, so this is what I ended up going back to. It's a MX4 um, sort of GeForce 4 card. You know the real low end sort of off OEM stuff. Um, you, you know the fact it's got a passive cooler on it probably gives it away. Um, but this is what happens when we sort of put the card in, it works fine in Windows, I've got a fancy cooler attached to it, um, but yeah it's got kind of an issue, and it's a shame because the card itself actually runs really well, very high frame rates, pushes games well beyond its means for the system, um, you know, I tried even running Doom 3 on this, and it, you know, to get some FPS. Yeah, what a shame that the card didn't work, but uh, running the video memory stress test revealed the issue. Of course, got bad VRAM. Um, quite a common issue on cards nowadays, you know, they're getting older. Um, I don't own a hot air station yet, but I'll hang on to the card and you never know, one day I might be able to fix that up. Thankfully though, the weak source MX440 seems to work just fine. Um, so we're going to crack on with my OS install. I'm going with Windows 2000 Professional. Whoa! One of actually my favorite Windows releases. I actually really have a big soft spot for this OS. Um, one day I'll go into that, but it's all installed, all the drivers are there, all everything's updated, blah blah blah, as you normally do with Windows. Um, I've even done the unofficial service pack, which I will put in the description there. Very handy indeed. And here is my CPU. I've managed to sneak an extra 100 megahertz out of it. I could probably go further than that, but you know, I thought I'd keep it safe. And I went for 512 megabytes of RAM, which I did test by the way. The MX440 there with the 64 megabytes of VRAM, and we got the Sound Blaster Live. So that's all there, all shown as good. Um, I'm not too sure why the CPU is identified as an Athlon XP. I'm not sure if that's normal for these. I don't actually own or haven't had any other Athlon CPUs before. So uh, is this normal? Someone let me know. 
<laughs> hopefully it, that's normal maybe it's just CPU-Z um, but yeah here we go all good to go we've got the DDR RAM with the 512 megabytes there mem test passed thankfully on all of that and uh, yeah let's crack into my favorite part some Word. games While GTA San Andreas is technically playable, uh, the frame rate is quite low, we're well below 30 FPS here. Um, it was a lot better with the um, GeForce Ti 4200 of course, but there's also another issue with this game which you'll hear um, soon enough. So this is the footage with the Ti 4200 and you can see where it got a slightly higher um, resolution and also a much higher frame rate and this is with the exact same CPU speed, same amount of memory um, but yeah just the difference in the video card so once again it is a shame that the um, that card didn't work but um, yeah I'll track something else down I think come on let's cruise in the ballers territory But um, yeah, this is the issue with this game, and it happens with any sound card. Yeah, sounds tend to get stuck, which is very annoying. Um, but moving on to Tomb Raider Legend. I've had this game sitting in my shelf for maybe three years, and this is the first time I've actually played it. A lot of my retro gaming machines aren't actually capable of playing this, so I'm working on building... Um, so another machine, uh, of course I love a good computer build, um, but I'll save that for a special moment, which I'm slowly gathering parts for. It is playable, but once again we are kind of dipping below 30 FPS, down to sort of probably 17, maybe 20 if that. I had a hard time getting fraps to run. Yeah, it took a bit of getting used to of those vines there. 
but a game that does run really well of course is Return to Castle Wolfenstein one of my favorites it's based on the Quake 3 engine so of course it runs on a potato so great fun here Well, GTA Vice City with the weaker MX440 seems to still run just fine. Um, I've noticed this game seems to favour sort of Windows 2000 XP sort of era of gaming. I am running this at uh, 1024 by 768 as you can see there. And uh, this is what it looks like with the frame limiter off. To be honest, not too much gained. I think I'd prefer to leave it on. Um, just because it wavers quite a bit. This is sort of on the threshold of this machine's capabilities. Ah, well I hope you're having a good Don't touch. I, uh, I do like that trick with the bike there, I learned that from KZ Through. If you get a bike fast enough you can jump off and uh, run the chef over, but um, you've got to be careful because the phone can end up flying out of his hands sort of as, it's, as it spawns in and, and it can end up on the roof, <laughs> so you can't get the phone therefore you can't sort of carry on with the mission, but yeah, Vice City seems to run just fine. I'm warning you, this is my show, you shut your mouth. Shut it now and keep it shut. Do not push me, hey, you shiny it. suited prick. Do not push me. Hey, you have to dress to him. doing it. That's what it's all about. It is? Yes, you thought your way to success. It's a three-step program based on studying successful people. Like me. Or maybe learning start doing is a little too intense for you. Maybe you should just think, hold that thought, complete. I never had anyone complain about that program. Stop that. Hey, I engage with you, friend, and you're exchanging with me. I cover this in my second take. One is a positive action as practiced by successful people. Another game that's been sitting on my shelf for probably four years too long is um, V8 Supercars 3. Uh, it's a game that I really actually quite enjoyed playing um, when I touched on it in this video. Um, but then again I played it with the TI-4200 before I realised that there was something wrong with the card. On the uh, faster graphics card it actually did run at a playable frame rate and the game was actually quite realistic. Um, so I really want to give this another go with a faster video card, but 
yeah here with the MX440 we're getting slideshow frame rates which is a real shame because as I said I had a bit brief chance to experience what it was like on a fast graphics card which I'll show you here try to ignore the artifacting but at least it's playable such a shame when the VRAM goes bad like this because it makes it really hard to see where you're going and what's coming up and that's exactly what you want for a racing game uh, but for now we're going to put the lid on the side of this massive case put the screws into the back of it and we'll seal it up and um, as I said it's never fully done it's never you know stays the same for much uh, longer so anyway if you guys have got some ideas for some AGP graphics cards that would pair nicely with an Athlon XP build as I said I've got a faster CPU on the way which should uh, creep it up to almost 2 gigahertz or thereabouts um, yeah I'd be curious to hear about those so yeah put your recommendations down into the comments but for now I'm going to put the feet on to make this tall case even taller I seriously cannot underestimate just how tall this case is it actually makes it really hard to lift and move around because I can't wrap my arms around the thing to move it Well here's the machine all put back together for now at least, um, as I said there's room for improvement and growth so I think I'm going to have a crack at some other parts in this machine, uh, but for now it was cool just getting the motherboard into a case where it actually was used and put together with you know everything else and as I said I had a lot of fun tracking down the case and all the various components to put this machine together I do love a good computer build if you guys haven't figured that out but anyway thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys very soon